now. Hey, good morning, everyone. We kindly find ourselves mm -hmm. here today like we did last Sunday morning uh, under threat of severe weather and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, it's starting to, to rain, the uh, skies are darkening, but we still know that Jesus is on the throne today. And you know, we're so yes, glad to, to be with you and uh, mm -hmm. we're praying for each and every one of you. We'll be praying a lot of, a lot of folks will be under the gun mm -hmm. as the day goes on with the weather, but it's so good to be back. And uh, we had a uh, midweek parking lot service mm -hmm. And we really was really enjoyed it. We want to uh, it was good. Uh, just say that wish we, our service was better down there, our internet service. But we kind of in a spot that there's not much internet service at all, so the the video was was horrible. Uh, you can barely see it. But we hope we got our message across that we love the Lord and and we love God's people and we thank the Lord for all that He's doing. Uh, again, we just come this morning just to worship with you. Uh, God's given me a thought, a word, I believe. It's, it's, it's so fitting for the time that we live in now. And we're going to be uh, excited to get to share that with you in just a little while. Uh, we see folks starting to log on now. We uh, Again, we just want to say good morning to you. And we pray that all is well. But if it's not, if you're feeling maybe a little gloomy with the weather out there, a little fearful or frightful or a little discouraged, we hope and pray by the Spirit of the Lord that He would just reach out wherever you're at and touch you this morning and meet every need that you have. Uh, we're going to pray quickly here, and, yes. and this is Teresa is going to minister uh, in, in, in testimony and in, uh, in song this morning, and we'll preach the word. But if you will pray with us, Father, we love you, we yes, thank Father you, and we God, praise you, God. Everyone, for God, this opportunity, watching. God, all Lord, these that shut in this Lord, morning. God. God, be with those that out that's having to work, Lord God, that's uh, God. In, the, in the hospitals and, Lord, yes, God, and people that that's find God. themselves displaced Lord, in Jesus. not only body but in spirit at times, oh God. We know that you are our answer, Lord, and we pray, God, this morning now that yes, you anoint Lord. this service. Anoint the ears to hear, the hearts yes, to receive Father this God, morning, O oh God, you, as we so carefully presence, give you all the praise God. and the glory Jesus. and the honor. In Jesus' wonderful name. You just you just worship with us here this morning and uh and I I, I just got a good feeling something great's gonna happen today. Amen. Yes, yeah, so good to see everyone logging on. Uh thankful that you're watching. Uh, we love each and every one of y'all. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Well give up and let Jesus take hold. Jesus, take hold. 
Praise Glory God. Glory to God. This morning I woke up with this song on my heart. I've never really sung it, but the words will bless you. Hallelujah.
what a wonderful God. promise. What yes. a wonderful, wonderful promise. Amen. And he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. Well, I'm going to step into the living room. <laughs> See if Sister T can get us turned One around. One day we'll figure out a fancy way to do this. Besides just turning the phone. And I'll try to I'll get him in the again. center. There we go. All right. Uh, e Ezekiel chapter number 37 this morning. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Amen. The possibility of these bones. Now, when Ezekiel was carried away in the spirit, remember, the nation of Israel was in captivity. They had been carried off in three different phases, uh, or eventually would be carried off in three different phases into, uh, I just like to say, the land of Nebuchadnezzar. He was a most powerful man at that time and uh, a ruler of a, of a, of a nation that God allowed the uh, Israelites to go into captivity for the simple reason they got lax and they began to worship other gods. They began to call on, on, on other means to, to supply their needs. You know, the Bible said God's a jealous God and that uh, he don't want anyone to put anything ahead of him. And if we will just trust the Lord and Cast our cares upon him. I believe this is a very critical time in American history. I believe it's a time that, that God's trying to get our attention. If we could get our attention. And uh, I was just thinking this morning, and there's a message God's prepared me when we find in Revelation, Jesus is standing at the door and he knocks. And, and he says, if you'll enter in, I'll come. I, I, if you'll open the door, I'll enter in and sup with you. And he said, I got to thinking about that. And there's only two, two ways that that's going to end. Either we're going to open the door and let him in, or he's going to say, we're going to reject him and, and not let him in, and he's going to walk away. And so God's prepared a message for us uh, later on, uh, simply entitled, When the Knocking Stops. But that's, that's then. This is now the, uh, Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley of, full of dry bones. It caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in an open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into them, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon uh, you, and will bring upon flesh upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bone came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as, I, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Glory to God. Man, what a vision that must have been. Being in a land of captivity where it looks like all hope is lost and, 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 and everything's gone now. But for a few moments this morning, can we first just look at, at the condition of what's happening? The condition of the nation. Remember, they're in captivity. 
I, I mean, you know, we, we, we think that America, you know, that was so free and, and, and living so large and, and not a care in the world. And all of a sudden, another one of these plagues or these epidemics come. Uh, and before long now, everybody's kind of uh, working out of their own home. Fear, pandemonium, you know, you go to the grocery stores when this hit and you couldn't find essentials. And uh, how quick? How quick that America, the, the, the great power of America can be resorted and brought down to like a third world country. Because you see, friend, at times we get lax and the, 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 uh, the nation gets lax and they begin to depend on, uh, other people. They begin to depend on other methods. But there's only one method, friend. There's only one person this morning that we need to depend on and we need to cast our cares upon the Lord Jesus Christ. For truly, He cares for us. He's a provider. Like I've said a million times, He's a way maker. So you look at the, the condition of not only the nation, but the condition of the dead. There's bones scattered. The Bible even calls them slain. So, so something has came and tore things apart, left them for dead, left their corpse to rot out there in the midst uh, 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 of, of such a tragic affair. You know, we're living in a, in a time today that some of these, the folks that's been, that's been uh, exposed to this epidemic, they're dying alone. Can, can you imagine that they're dying alone when families is torn apart by these things, when, when conditions and circumstances seems, seems to be larger than life it, itself, the condition of, of the dead, but not only a physical death, but a spiritual death. Let me tell you, there's no one more miserable in this world than a person that doesn't put their confidence and trust in, in God. I want to tell you there's a lot of resources and a lot of riches and a lot of people think that they got everything they need, but just like that, it can be taken away. I want to tell you, this is the very time to trust the Lord. So the condition of the nation, the condition of the dead, and the condition of the men who's lapsed into a, such a spiritual low point in, in their life. This is not the time to give up or nor to give in. This is the time to trust in, in Jesus. Yes. This is the very time to hold on. Let me tell you, friend, the anchor still holds. Yes, and if you want, it seems like you're on a proverbial ship this morning being tossed to and fro and that everything's coming against you and nothing's working out for you, I want to tell you the anchor, the Lord God himself, still holds. And if we'll put our trust in him, listen now. I said, these are the conditions of the valley full of dry bones. This seems nothing to promise better things. There, there is no effect, no movement. Seems like all hope is gone. But all of a sudden, God arises. And God speaks to a man, a prophet that himself is in captivity now. And he, and he carries him out to this place. And he shows him the whole scope of, of his surroundings. Let me tell you, friend, the very, the very essence of, of the truth of the word of God is that when God brought Ezekiel out in a vision and showed him the very essence of his surroundings, uh, we don't read where fear uh, comes into uh, uh, Ezekiel's heart. We don't see the gloom or we don't hear gloom coming out of, of Ezekiel's mouth. God asked the man of God a question. Can these bones live? Uh, and there's only one answer, one response that would be profitable to the ears of God uh, when the man of God sent back to God, Lord you know God, you know, and what he was saying there is you know it all. God, there's no secret in you. God, there's nothing too dark that your light can't penetrate. There's no place that a person can run or hide from the presence of God. So Ezekiel answered and he said, God, you know. So that's when the Lord said, well, you talk to it. You tell it. You tell them. You tell them what I want you to say right now. And I believe for every ministry that, that's going by the way of Facebook or YouTube or, or so many more methods that this modern technology has given us an opportunity to share the glorious gospel. Let's seize the moment. Let's call a nation back to repentance. Uh, let's call God's people back together. Let's hit our knees again. Uh, lift our hands and voices yes. to a sovereign God. Uh, and one more time, God... 
mountain, we can see uh, the miraculous power of God uh, with his own hands of, of, of strength, uh, his own hands of creativity, reach in the midst of a problem uh, yes. and turn a hopeless situation back to the good yes, of amen. God and God's people. Amen. In the judgment of men, they were past help. They're scattered. Their bones is, is, is bleaching out under the hot day sun. They, they were utterly destroyed. Their land is ravaged. Their capital is overthrown. Themselves captives in Babylon. But I got good news this morning. God still lives, friend. He still lives this morning. God has not been God's not been carried away in the captivity. I know a lot of people tries to keep God in a little box and only lets him move in certain areas of their life. But God was not God is not a captive to no nothing or no one. I, I want to tell you this morning, I said, God's not been carried away in captivity. And in the Lord Jehovah. There is everlasting strength, the Word of God says. Now, three things I want to look at quickly, and we'll move on. Three things about this uh, that we're talking about this morning. The first thing is that the people, they could not deliver themselves. Look at the bones. They're there. They're lifeless. They're, they're, they're being bleached out. The, 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 whole, the whole scenario paints to a picture of a very bloody, uh, mutilation to people and it's scattered all across that, that, that landscape there. They're in a place that they cannot deliver themselves. Listen, the wisest among them might scheme and the boldest might plot, but it would never avail anything. Why? Because, friend, their bleached bones in the valley were a symbol of their utter weakness. I want to tell you that no way possible they could deliver themselves. Just this last week, I heard about a politician standing up in front of the national media and saying, God can't bring help. God don't bring an answer. God, God's not the one that can rescue. Uh, they think modern medicine, well, let me tell you, we hoping and praying that they find a cure for this epidemic. But the day that they find it will be the day that God puts it in the mind of one of these doctors or scientists. Right. I want to tell you everything. God uses medicine yes. at times. God uses doctors. In fact, Luke was a physician. But that was a place even in Luke's life as he rode that rough, that rough storm huh, in the 27th chapter of Acts and he says well, uh, now without 14 days without seeing the sun or stars and all hope is then taken away. That was a doctor saying this. We have went as far as we can go. Huh? We have come up in thought and we've tried this and that as much as we can huh? and we're still falling short huh? but all of a sudden God puts them in the mindset huh, of, one of, of one of these physicians one of the scientists or however God wants to bring the cure and I believe God is going to bring a cure my friend and we can say as a church and I hope we can say as a nation it was God himself uh, that brought this cure to his people yes. I said they could not bring deliverance to themselves the second thing is that their present condition could be overcame by their possible future Oh yeah, you see friend, so many people that we talk to all across this nation, at times they feel like they've reached, a, they've reached an end, that it's hopeless. They can't understand why they're having to go through the things they're going through. They can't, they can't comprehend how that God's even going to deliver them from these things. Maybe there's somebody, and we again hope that you share this around with uh, on your contacts, that maybe somebody that might find himself at rock bottom this morning would, would hear an encouraging message and say, you know what, it is, there is a possibility that I can rise from these heat piles. There is a possibility that I will live again, uh, that my my hopeless state won't be hopeless anymore when God puts his hand in the midst. Uh, my, my dead end street, uh, my dark gloom, my despair, my loneliness, uh, my addiction, uh, my pain, my problems. Uh, I know it's got me at rock bottom right now, someone might say, but if I'll do like the Bible says, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, uh, and like I tell my church all the time, uh, if he's our 
author. If he starts it and he's our finisher, he finishes it. I believe the glory of God still is situated uh, right in the middle of our lives. Uh, not only in the good times, but in the bad times. Uh, not only when it's so bright as a noonday sun, uh, but it's so dark you can't see uh, where your next move is going gonna, is gonna to take you, what direction you're going to go off in. Uh, but let, this, let the Word of God arise in your heart uh, for the steps of a good man uh, are ordered of the Lord, my friend. And if we'll just allow the Lord, allow the Lord, amen, to order our steps, our present condition can be overcame. It can be overcome by our possible future. I believe we've got, we got a bright future. The church is not dead, friend. No, the church is not dead. We've been, we've been momentarily interrupted possibly that we kind of, God's got us out of our, our little cycles that becomes vicious sometimes when we get so locked in and locked on of what we want to do and not what God wants us to do. But one more time, God's shaken. He's shaken this nation. I believe He's shaken this nation not out of, for judgment, but for, for repentance that we could turn to the Lord again. We could call on the Lord, cry out to the Lord and say, God, come one more time. Repent. Let us repent of our, of our shortcomings, of our sins. Let us not just repent. You might say, well, preacher, I, I'm not sinning. Huh? Well, I, it's so uh, so good you could say that. Huh? But you don't know that might that mindset of yours, uh, that, that mindset that would have full of pride uh, might be your sin this morning. Huh? But don't just repent from for our shortcomings. Uh, repent for the nation's shortcomings that God one more time would get a hold of this nation and just like he got a hold of Israel he told him he said it's not over he said it's not over and the Bible said in the breath of God came and they give them life again listen friend if the church is going to have life today it's going to come because God through the Holy Ghost is going to have to breathe into the house of God one more time Ye are the temple of the house of ye are the house of God. Paul said that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Listen. So they could not deliver themselves. Their present condition could be overcame by their possible future. And number three is authentic revival is a gra is gradual in its progress. You know, we, we hear about revivals popping up here and popping up there, and then in three weeks it's all dead. That's not authentic revival, my friend. Authentic revival is long-lasting. Listen, the first indication of bone coming back to bone was a noise. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, friend, when, 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 I, when I go somewhere to minister, while I'm there and when I'm gone, I, I, you, you said well, I, you said you like noise. Absolutely. I like the noise of, of the community talking now. Uh, oh, yeah, I like the noise of the community saying, hey, there's something real going on. Uh, listen, we, we've ministered to people that might not believe God as much as we do. But God, I said, but God, let them see and let them hear our desire for you and for truth, Lord, that, that you will cause a hunger into their lives uh, that we could stir the fire revival. It don't take a room full. It don't take a church full. It starts with one. Oh, one day I was praying a long time ago when I read the scripture where two or more would gather in his night. He will be in the midst. And the Lord spoke to me because at times I found myself all alone. But the Lord said, but wait. It's simple addition. You're one. He said, I'm one, but together we become two. He said, that's all it takes is just someone with a hungry heart. Uh, and all it takes is that somebody desires, uh, that desires to see a move of God. Uh, let me tell you, don't wait for the whole church to get revived. Uh, don't wait for the nation to come back alive. Uh, you start the revival in your home. You start the revival in your community. You get out there and tell people about the saving grace uh, the love and the divineness of our Lord God, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. So I said this revival, first the indication of bone coming back to bone was a noise, then a shaking. 
Oh, let's pray today. Can we, God, shake this nation again? Shake us back to soberness, oh God. Uh, shake us back to attention. Uh, shake us back to the forefront uh, of where you've called us to be. This is not time to sit back uh, and do nothing. This is the very time, the opportunity that God has given you and I, that you and I could arise uh, as Nehemiah went into to Jerusalem uh, and so began to survey uh, that, that, that wall that surrounded that city at one time was destroyed. Uh, the gates were burnt out by fire. Uh, but as, as Nehemiah began to rebuild and reconstruct uh, the wall around Jerusalem, around the temple, listen friend, uh, the Bible said as they began to dig through the rubbish, uh, they would come across some stones uh, that was in all that old dust, all that old ash and rubbish. Uh, and the Bible said this, uh, that they revived the stones uh, back out of the rubbish meaning the rubbish they parted with uh, but the stones they begin to rebuild the wall uh, friend in our lives in my life your life uh, at times we got some rubbish we got some old stuff uh, that we need to let God get rid of it uh, we need to part with it uh, all these old ideas these bitter moments uh, this old thoughts of jealousy and pain and affliction uh, yes. resentfulness uh, who can do this better than that? Uh, let's let let's give all that junk to God uh, yeah. and let God reach into our hearts uh, and begin to see uh, that the stone, yeah. hallelujah, that Jesus uh, is still alive and well. Yeah. And let's build our ministries. Let's build our families. Yes. Let's build our churches. Let's build our futures on the principle of the solid foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Listen, just a few more moments. I said, listen, the first indication of bone coming back to bone was a noise, then a shaking. But if left only there, this scene will be viewed no more than a valley full of spiritual skeletons. And I wonder this morning, how many... How many in our land today is no more than just a spiritual skeleton? Oh, they there's no breath in them. Not in a skeleton. As glorious as true doctrine is when it's alive and living. I said as glorious as this true doctrine is when it's alive and living in the souls of men. There is nothing so horrible as dead doctrines helped by dead souls. Let me tell you, friend, you can't put God on a program. You, 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 you can draw it up and plan it the way you want it, but if you truly want a true Holy Ghost revival, God's going to come in and upset the apple cart. Yes. He'll turn us inside out. He'll shake all that junk away from us and out of us that we can just call on His name, huh? that we can desire a move of His God. Listen, three things that's horrible. is profession without possession. I said the horrible atrocity of this is profession without possession. Friend, I want to tell you, we need to profess. But before we can profess it, we got to possess it. Uh, and let us one more time ask the Lord, clean us, Lord. Shine your spotlight into our soul. Uh, go into every chamber of our heart uh, and shine in us uh, and look through us and let us see you as you see us, Lord, that we can have have true profession. We can call on the name of the Lord. We can stand on the solid rock. We can know by the surety that Christ is Lord. I said profession without possession. Number two is faith without works. Oh, oh wait a minute. Don't turn me off. Listen, faith without works. Oh no, grace. You're saved by your faith coupled with His grace. And they come together as a reunion and relationship. But the works that he's talking about is that when you have enough faith to believe him, you will desire to go out there and lift him up uh, and obey his word uh, and speak his, 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 his name. Uh, I want to tell you, it becomes work in faith. Oh no, we can't be good enough, friend, to make heaven. Uh, we can't buy our way in. Uh, there's nothing we can do to maybe uh, uh, turn God's eyes to us to say, 
say, well, I, he's favored more than that one. No, sir. God's no respecter of people. I'm talking about faith without works is dead, James said. What's he's not talking about God being dead? But he's talking about your works is dead. Because you got to have faith, friend. Faith enough to believe. Faith enough to hold on. We got faith this morning that this epidemic's going to pass too. But I believe if America would begin to call out on God one more time in their living rooms, sitting in their car, or wherever they might hear this word from not just me, but all oh, so many great men of God. It's telling America the same thing. Pastor Hagee, I flipped him on just for a second this morning while we were before we started preparing for this. Pastor Hagee said if America would call upon the, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob one more time, let me tell you, friend, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what pleased God back then uh, will please God today. But listen, friend, uh, what brought God's people into captivity back then will bring us back to captivity today. I said, listen, faith without works is dead. And number three, theology without relationship. Theology without relationship. Man, we've never seen America so, so religious these days. Everybody talks about Everybody knows God. It's hard press. It's hard press. Just like it was when Mr. Bill Clinton won the White House years ago. And down here around Louisiana, he was hard pressed to find anybody to admit that they voted for Mr. Clinton. But yet, he, he won. It's the same way with the Christian attitude and aspect today. Everybody's so religious. Everybody will say, oh God, God, uh, he's doing this, he's doing that. Uh, but listen, theology without relationship uh, is dead, my friend. I'm not talking about you got to come to my church or his church or their church. Uh, I'm talking about become the church of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, where you will repent of your sins. When you're simply saying, I'll lay my life down uh, that I can pick it up in Christ, uh, that I'm not my own. I've been bought with the price. Uh, I want to tell you the price that, that, that cost uh, it cost Jesus everything he loved you enough to lay his life down uh, to give his life freely to you uh, that you and I could be not merely religious but we could be born again my God to be born again I, I tell my church and anywhere I preach before I got born again I got religious I got to teach in Sunday school and I, I got to doing religious things and hanging around religious people. But, but there was something missing in my life and I realized that just reading a Sunday school lesson or, or just going to church every once in a while, it was, it, and all that was good, but that's not what saved me. Falling on my face and recognizing that Jesus paid the price. I didn't. That Jesus was the only way. And it doesn't matter the things that, that we come in contact with, but what matters is that you can recognize that God is your answer. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Friend, listen, you've got to have, you've got to have more than theology. You've got to have a relationship. You've got to put your hand in the nail-scarred hand of the Lord and allow Him to walk you. No, no, you don't walk Him. He walks you. Glory to God. Listen. The breath came unto them, and they lived. What, what a simple concept. The breath came into him. How many of you watching right now that you can remember when the breath of God filled your spiritual lungs, and you stood up and you lived? You're not your own anymore. You're not your own anymore. The breath of God came into them, and they lived. Let me tell you. The Spirit of God does more than influence us. The Spirit of God has put into us to give us victory. To give us victory, my friend. For now my words should be His words. My concepts and my views should be His views. I want to tell you, friend, this life does not belong to you and I, but it belongs to the one that's put breath in our lungs that one more time we can recognize who He is through these times of uncertainty. We're not certain. 
Last Sunday, our, our great, great friends and our pastor friends and our church folks was under the gun. The, the, the storm spared us, but it hit more to the north. Today, who knows? I, I couldn't tell you that if we, in the next five minutes, the home might blow away. But I can promise you one thing. Through the midst of any storm, if it's a natural storm or if it's a spiritual storm, the power of God will still hold you and keep you. If we lose our physical breath today we'll still have spiritual breath forever and ever amen the possibility of you and I of these old bones amen and the older I get seem like the more these old physical bones hurt but I want to tell you there's some spirit that's a spirit man there's a spirit yes. man that lives in me and you today uh, that'll never grow old that'll never get tired hallelujah that uh, that'll never give heed amen to the to the attacks of the enemy listen friend again they were in Ezekiel was in captivity when the spirit of the lord brought him out there and showed him what a vision what a vision but with the vision come a promise. Prophesy. Preachers, let's prophesy. Yes. Let's uh, simply let's, let's listen, church. And you that's watching this morning. You know, we've made prophecies come from some, and we name them prophets, and, and all that's got its due and it's got its place. And God still uses that. But do you know when you're walking through Walmart looking for maybe a roll of paper towels or, or, or some Germex, and you're talking to somebody, you eventually prophesy. You're either lifting up God or you're lifting up yourself. You're either denouncing God or you're lifting Him up high where He belongs. Every word out of your mouth can will become influential. And I used to tell my church in Jonesboro and I tell the church in, in Bruyette that we pastor now, we are either every day, every moment of a day when we're around somebody, we are either... Affecting people or we infecting people. I said we either affecting people for the cause of Christ, but if we're not affecting them for the good of this gospel, we will infect them with all of our bitterness and resentfulness and restlessness and the lack of hope. All that shows to be no faith. But one more time, you might be at rock bottom this morning, but if you will lift your hand up to the hand that holds it all together, yes. I want to tell you, friend, I want to tell you that his hand is never, his hand is never too weak to hold you. His arm is never too short to find you. His eyes is never too dim that he can't see you. His ears is never deaf that he can't hear you. And one more time, if you will cast your cares yes. upon the Lord, for He cares for us. Your possibility yes. is not yes. behind you. It's ahead of you. And if you will just begin to trust the Lord, our young people, man, my family, my family is scattered, it seems like, all over the country. Got a little brother in, in Long Island, New York, that's right in the heart of this pandemic. Our youngest is in Nashville, our daughter in Kentucky, our oldest in, down in, in South Louisiana. I want to tell you there's a lot of things happening all around. My nephews, I think somewhere still around Fort Worth, flying jet planes. My, my nieces up in, 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 in the eastern seaboard. We pray so much so often. Our next door neighbors, those that we run into at the store, those that I'll, I'll, I'll go back to maybe a job one day and, and come in contact with people there. We must affect people for the cause of Christ. There, He is our only answer. Yes. He is our only way. Don't you love Him? Yes. Trust Him. Call out His name. Give Him His due. And one more time, He will. He will reach down. He will touch us. Let's pray for our nation this morning. Let's pray that God would open the eyes up of the nation. Dear God, it's, it's not time to be full of politics. It's time to plea with God. I know you got your favorites and I know you got those, you know. 
But it's no time for that. It's time to ask God to intervene. God, search our hearts out. Search our hearts out, God. And let us one more time be who you called us to be. Touch every need. Touch the doctors and the nurses and the, the receptionists and all the caretakers, the paramedics. God, touch the families that's been afflicted. God, touch those that's their families. There's families suffering this morning that their loved ones has died. And they wasn't even allowed to be in the same room. Oh, what loneliness that must bring, God. Touch the tragedies that's not only affected by the pandemic, but touch the tragedies of everyday life, of the families of God that's suffering. Our soldiers that's displaced. Touch their families this morning. God, make the phrases, make America great again. Father, the only way America can be great again is if we would call your name out. If we would trust you, Lord, that we could raise up a nation that would know you again. If we would raise up a nation, oh God, that would call your name, that would walk in your spirit, that we trust your guidance, Lord. God, as Sister Teresa just sings and plays as we worship and pray, that you go through this technology, God, this mainstream technology now and accomplish great things, God. Touch the hearts and the lives and the needs of your people. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. We so, so love you this morning. So, Mish, will you worship with us as we just continue now? Glory to God. Out here, I could Thank you, Jesus. do nothing. Without Him, I'd surely fail. We
know, I just want to take some time that maybe you're sitting there and you heard this message and you heard this song and you want Jesus. Yes, amen. Because you know that you can't make it without him. But maybe you don't know how, how do you get Jesus? Well, the Bible tells us that all we have to do is just repent of our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Pray to him. If you believe he died on that cross for yes, you. Yes, amen. And you tell him and you ask him to just come into your heart right now. Just you and the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He will come in and he will wipe away. He will wash your sins away. And you know what's greater than that? He will he will forget it. Yes, he it's in the past now. Yes, you can be a new creature. All things have become new. Thank you. Just ask him, invite him into your heart today. He wants to be your savior. Thank you, Jesus. He is the way maker. Without him, we can do nothing. But with him, yes. all things are possible. I encourage you to ask him into your heart today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you need to talk to us, even after we get through with this live stream, give us a call. Message me. We're here for you. We yeah. also meet so many people. And we begin to talk to people about their relationship. And they say, well, preacher, there was a time in my, there was a time in my life. I, you don't know how many times I've heard that phrase right there. Preacher, there was a time in my life. But now, and then they paint the picture of doom and hopelessness. And they paint the picture of giving up. But that's when we, we, we encourage people, it's not over. Okay, so we, maybe we've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Maybe we fail. Maybe we've stumbled. Maybe we've lost our way. But you can still call on Him. Yes. And your relationship that you used to have, it can be greater now. Amen. He raised up a, a, a great and exceeding... Listen to this. An exceeding great army. I'm talking about from a boneyard now. From a boneyard where there was no life. There was no indication of life. But he, when, he, when God got through with it, He said, an exceeding great army. And those two words, exceeding, means extraordinary. <laughs> extraordinary or exceptional. Extraordinary. You know what he's saying? He said he wants to take a, a people that's maybe that's lost their way, that's been displaced and, and, and scattered, and your mind's all scattered, and, and your heart now has been broken, and it's you emptied out, and you don't know what to do and where to go. He wants to talk to people just like you. And he wants to cause you to be an exceeding great army. For the service of God. We sure love you. Man, we, yes. we, we so miss you. <laughs> Amen. And uh, just, I, I just feel the Lord this morning. And I felt God in, in, in our songs and the words that God mm -hmm. had laid on my heart to say. And, and we're praying for you. Yes, and amen. again, we hope and pray that you share this around. And that you don't know. You, you don't know if it... Who's going to end up maybe viewing and, and uh, watching? And, but most of all, you don't know who's going to end up believing. And that's what it's all about, mm -hmm. believing in Christ. Yes. Amen. And holding on to his glorious hand. We love you. Yes, amen. Uh, they talking about thunderstorms again Wednesday. Well, you know, parking lot services and thunderstorms don't work real good together. So if not there, we'll be here. And again... Mm -hmm. it, we hate that our internet service is so bad down there that it's almost uh, extinct. <laughs> and uh, we'll try to figure it out one day, but pray for us. The church is, you know, it was it was busting out the seams on Sunday morning. Now we expecting it to even be bigger when we finally get to go back and start, <laughs> yes. you know, attending the, again. But pray for us. And if we can ever help y'all, know that we're here. We love you. Yes, amen. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Share it around and... Again, we'll see you soon.
Be Love. blessed. Bye, y'all.